either YouTube, this is SGM4306, and happy Easter. And yeah, I've just been um, soldering and writing software for this guy. I believe, I think I have, in a past video I showed you guys I bought these little meters for about a dollar each off eBay. And um, I think they were, let's see, here's the original scale that was printed on them. Yeah, they were like 0 to 25 volts. And so I basically printed out my own uh, paper uh, gauges, essentially. I designed them in... It was Inkscape or something like that, some freeware program, and uh, printed them out on an inkjet printer and made a clock. So this guy is the circuit board here. Try not to move; it's kind of a little fragile right now. Uh, basically, there's a PIC 16F886, and that's the main processor. There is a DS1302 RTC with a uh, 32 kilohertz crystal right next to it there, and there is a uh, dual channel. Uh, what is it? an MCP4922? That's a dual channel uh, DAC. So basically what that allows is uh, my microprocessor to pull the, the real-time clock, get the values, and then scale the output, uh, the output voltage for both of these channels, one for hours, one for minute. And basically, um, in order to set the time here, we can just demonstrate that, you just uh, press the top button here, and you can see the hours incrementing. To set the minutes, likewise, you just click the bottom button and you can see it eventually flicks back down. If you press and hold, it doesn't do anything. Um, you actually have to release the button for it to register. And um, I have a extra feature, which is a touch sensor right here, the same ones I use on my Game Boys. And if you touch it, there's a built-in backlight. We can turn off the lights and that looks pretty nice in real life. Um, it's not too bright on the eyes. Um, it's showing up a little brighter on camera than it actually is. But yeah, that's that's a really nice glow. And in order to change the um, the status of the LEDs, if you press and hold the touch sensor while clicking the uh, button, uh, the top button, it'll uh, show you either 0, 1, or 2. Those are three modes. So in 0 mode, it basically means that the light's always off in 1 it's uh, set by a timer, so it'll eventually time out and turn off. And then two, which is the mode that it was, it was in right now, um, it'll leave the lights on the whole time. So if I press and hold, I can change this to zero, and it'll shut off. And then if I press and hold, it'll go to one. And if I wait a little while, it'll shut off. There, just shut off. And then you can turn it back on just by clicking the, the button. And then I can turn it on too. It'll just stay on forever. So just put that back on too. Anyway, yeah, you can see um, it is very nice looking. I actually had to modify these displays quite a bit. I'll uh, do a follow-up video with more information about this, and um, I'll post, you know, whatever the design files. I designed this PCB kind of by hand, um, just sort of free dead bug wiring, whatever. So I don't have any design information for that, but I can draw up a simple schematic. But anyway, uh, the most interesting modifications I had to do was, um, I showed in the past video, actually. Yeah, it was the first video in this series. I had to uh, short the resistor, the input resistor, in order so I can get full uh, scale deflection um, with, I think, a maximum voltage of like two volts or something for full scale. And so um, I had to do that. In addition, I uh, hot glued uh, some um, machine turn sockets so I could actually plug and unplug LEDs and angle them just right. And I had uh, wired them up in uh, two LEDs in parallel, and I have a little um, little tiny PCB there connecting to the magnet wire so that I can sneak the wires underneath the, uh, the plastic bezel. And I had that going then to the actual controller. So both of these LEDs, um, all sets of LEDs are wired in parallel, two per um, GPIO pin, basically. Uh, so I could actually independently turn on and off each channel, but I just have them both go on at the same time. Um, but anyway, other than that, um, yeah, I had to... There isn't an external adjust for the zeroing. Um, I actually had to carefully bend. Um, there's like a little metal post in there connected to the, the leaf spring. And I had to very carefully bend. And one of them actually broke off, um, rendering the, the display broken. But luckily, you can actually re-solder uh, the spring back on there. 
And so I was able to resurrect. I believe it was a minute display that broke the hour one. It's still fine. Um, yeah, and for as for the mystery of how I'm actually uh, scaling the displays, I'm I'm just using a lookup table. As I noted before, the display is nonlinear, just slightly. It actually is pretty good in terms of like the middle um, area. It's pretty linear, um, but as you get towards the edges, um, the same change in voltage doesn't. Uh, reflect a fixed number of degrees uh, of the needle itself. So I did have to actually change um, just a little bit. Um, so I ended up just using a lookup table and just having fixed outputs. Um, so that's good enough for me. Um, I was going to actually modify the code to do a, a smoother sweep, but I kind of like the way that it, it just kind of increments and kind of wobbles for a second while it uh, reaches equilibrium. So I think that's actually uh, pretty cool. Yeah, you can see when I turn on the lights, the uh, reference voltage, so the 5 volt rail drops slightly, and you can see it actually affects the uh, the metering uh, slightly, but it's not that big of a deal. I can add a cap on the reference rail or get a better power supply because right now this is actually just running off of a USB cable to my computer. Um, so it's probably only able to draw like 100 milliamps. But yeah, other than that, you can see everything works, and uh, I really love this backlight. That was a great idea. I was actually going to originally put it behind the screen and use the uh, clear opaque uh, plastic in the back to diffuse it, but I found that I needed to crank the brightness up on the LEDs because it was it was too thick. It was diffusing too much of the light. Um, but um, by putting them right underneath, you know, pointing upwards towards the display, I was able to get a really nice looking contrast and. It looks uh, really cool retro if I turn off the lights again. That's absolutely beautiful. Anyway, have a, I'll have uh, more information later, and hopefully you guys enjoyed my rambling. If you do want to build something like this um, yourself, stay tuned for the next video where I'll go a bit more in detail and include some uh, source files as I put them together. So until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.